What? Yeah, yeah, you're comfortable, but the people in the back are not going to be able to see. So, yes, please, just come forward. You can just grab those chairs and bring them forward. You'll, you'll be much happier. But if you don't want to, that's okay. All right. So, Wikidata is the newest sister project by the Wikimedia Foundation. And I think it is also the least understood, the least understood sister project. Um, it is very different from Wikipedia. A little technical, and nobody really made any organized effort to make sure that all the Wikimedians around the world, all the different communities, understand Wikidata. And so, some communities just figured it out on their own, and others stayed behind. And that's a shame, because Wikidata is exciting, it's amazing. So, I took it upon myself to offer this training at this conference, so that at least those of you who are here have a chance to get to know Wikidata. So, uh, you are lucky. You are lucky uh, because Wikidata is already and is going to be even more of a hugely important research tool in the humanities. A lot of people don't realize it yet, but they will in two, three, five years. You're lucky because you get to find out about it today. Uh, so you are ahead of the ahead of the curve. Um, you're also lucky because this is going to be a gentle introduction, so it's going to be painless, no pain today. All right. So I'd like to start before we get to Wikidata itself. I'd like to start by talking about two key problems that led to the creation of Wikidata. Two key problems. The first problem is the problem of dated data. That is, data that is out of date, that is not up to date. Um, and what do I mean by that? Very often on Wikipedia, we write about something that is out of our everyday lives. Like, I might write about a city in Brazil, or a, a uh, person in China. And we write the article, and as we are writing the article, we do research, we find sources, we cite those sources, and then that's it. And then that article goes on to live its life. And we don't always update the article when facts about it change. For example, if I wrote about a city in Brazil, or translated an article about a city in Brazil, into my home wiki, the Hebrew Wikipedia, uh, the article would of course have an info box. Everybody knows what an info box is, right, on the side? We have an info box, and it would list the name of the mayor of the city, the population size of the city, and other facts, square kilometers, etc. But the nature of this topic of cities is that facts like population size and mayor change. These things change every few years, right? Now, when Brazil is doing a census, a population census, and gets new official figures for the population size of the city of Salvador in Brazil. Do I get an email? No. No, the, the, the Brazilian government does not send me an email when it does a new census. I do not get an email. I don't get any kind of trigger to tell me, hey, there's new data available. You should update the Hebrew article about the city of Salvador or they had elections 
there's a new mayor, it's Mr. So-and-so, or Miss So-and-so. No, I don't get a notification about it. So how does the article stay up to date? Well, on the Portuguese Wikipedia, the language spoken in Brazil, on the Portuguese Wikipedia, it is very likely to be up to date because Brazilians living in Brazil are very likely to notice that there's a new census out and they will go and systematically update the population figures in the major cities, correct? That's, that's something that Wikipedians do in Brazil. Would they update my Hebrew Wikipedia article? No, they would not. It's written from right to left. Crazy. Uh, they would not update the Hebrew Wikipedia article. Nor would they send me an email saying, hey, you may want to update the article, we have fresh data. Over here in the Portuguese Wikipedia, we already have fresh data for you. There's just, do you see the problem I'm, I'm talking about? There's just no mechanism to let you know that data has changed. And that you, your Hebrew article, is now giving incorrect information to the reader, out of date information. So the people in Brazil are likely to notice and change. Everywhere else in the world, especially in smaller languages, it is much less likely to be updated. This very often is the case when you translate an article. You translate it according to the situation it was in when you translated it, say in 2007, and that is how the article will remain in your language because nobody gets uh, appropriate triggers to update. So you agree that's, that's just a problem in Wikilife, right? That's, that's something that happens. Um, also, let's say I'm a super motivated Brazilian Wikipedia, okay? I know there's fresh census data. I know uh, Indian Wikipedians are unlikely to notice that data. So I want to help them and I go to the Punjabi Wikipedia and the Hindi Wikipedia and the Telugu Wikipedia and I update that population size in the article about Salvador. That's really wonderful of me. But A is error prone. I might make mistakes since I can't really understand the language. I'm just updating the number. I might make a mistake. And B, do I really have to do this for every piece of data in 20, 30, 50 languages, that's very repetitive, very manual, right? So this is all part of problem number one. Data, like name of mayor, population size, gets out of date. The second problem I want to bring before you before we talk about Wikidata is uh, inflexible ways of querying the free knowledge that we all work so hard to, to produce and to cure. Is there a question somewhere? Uh, the, uh, if we go to the, to, to the article about that city of Salvador, it is likely to mention the major industries in that city, for example. You know, I, I, I'm, this is off the top of my head, so I, I don't know what the city of Salvador produces. But let's say it produces uh, rubber and uh, aluminium. Okay? That's listed in the article. You know, somewhere in one of the paragraphs, it would say the, the city's major exports are rubber and aluminium. Okay. Now suppose I want to know what other cities in the world produce rubber. That knowledge is in Wikipedia. Do you agree? It's in all kinds of articles about cities that mention, you know, produces rubber. But is there an easy way to retrieve that? Is there a way to go to Wikipedia and say, give me a list of all the cities that produce rubber. There is no such way. Unless... Categories, right? Unless someone has created a category, cities exporting rubber, right? 
and, and we do that sometimes, right? Maybe not for cities and sporty rubber, but we have categories for, you know, people from India, uh, musicians, we have categories for all kinds of things, and sometimes we have categories that are quite specific, right? We might have categories for, I don't know, uh, uh, musicians with disabilities. You know, if someone has thought about that category and then went and populated that category, then I would be able to fairly easily find at least some musicians with disabilities. But of course that depends on someone having created that category. And there is a very practical limit to how many such categories you can create. If you've done any, any serious amount of work with categories on your wiki, you must have run into arguments about, should we have a category for that kind of thing? Isn't that too ridiculous? Are we, go, are we going to start creating a category for, you know, people dressed in yellow? You know, uh, it's, it's not sufficient. Categories are not sufficient. But they don't Yes, and, and I, was, I was just going to say, especially when you want a compound query. That is, what if I want, I don't know, what if I want cities exporting rubber that are at 1,000 meters elevation or higher. Okay? These are two, two separate queries, right? Cities that are over 1,000 feet of, uh, meters of elevation and cities exporting rubber. And there's no Wikipedia in the world, I think, that would give me a category for that, right? It's just too arbitrary, that combination. So that's what I call inflexible ways of lateral queries of Wikipedia, right? I want to cut through Wikipedia and get some kind of lateral query like that. It's very hard. If I'm lucky, there would be a category, but even then, I cannot actually intersect categories very well. There are some tools, some external tools, that do category intersection, uh, but it's still not very uh, convenient. And of course, I could go to pretty ridiculous lengths. I could ask, the query that I would like to see is who are painters who lived in Florence in the 15th century? Because I'm curious to know what painters might have met Michelangelo. It's, it's something I want to know. Again, not easy to retrieve from Wikipedia, even if we have articles about all those painters and those articles mention, of course, when they were born, when they died, and they might mention that they lived in Florence at some point in their lives. So, you know, you could come up with your own examples for queries that are just impossible to, to make on Wikipedia, and I would like to make a point to you that when something is impossible, it doesn't occur to you that you need it. But when it becomes possible, suddenly you need it a lot. Think about smartphones. Or, or cell phones in general, right? We, we all are old enough to remember living without them, but now it's hard to imagine right? civilization without mobile phone technology. So uh, most of you maybe haven't uh, thought about the queries that I just uh, described because you kind of knew it was impossible, so it didn't occur to you to demand that from Wikipedia. But I'm encouraging you to demand that from Wikipedia because it can be done because these two problems have one solution. And that solution is an editable central storage for structured and linked data on a wiki under a free license. Which is a long way of saying wiki data. Wiki data. Now let's talk a little bit about what that means. But first, um, so what do I mean by structured data? Uh, the fact that Salvador, let's say, exports rubber is unstructured data. It's a fact that was included in a paragraph, a descriptive paragraph in the Wikipedia article. But there's no easy way to spot that piece of data, that information. Now, we already have some, some semi-structured data on Wikipedia in the info boxes. Do you have a question, sir? Sir? Do you have a question? 
I, I would like I would like it if you uh, keep talking to a minimum, or if you have a question, ask me. Um, so, structured data, info boxes. We already have some structured data on Wikipedia in the info boxes, right? Where you know you you can go there and see population so and so, mayor so and so, square area so and so, right? That's that's structured data as distinct from the unstructured data that we include in the text of the article. So the need for structured data has already been recognized a while ago, and the solution we used to have for it was info boxes. But that's, that's not enough, that's not structured enough. Structured data is an approach to data that wants each datum, each piece of data, to be well described and independent so that you can reach it or retrieve it independently of some larger collection like an article. Um, it is also regular. Now, our info boxes are also kind of regular because they're usually made with a template, right? An info box in a page is made in a template so that it's not like, you know, I wrote an article about a city and I will just put whatever I like in the info box. No, there's a template that was created by the community and I just fill in the fields in the template. Those can be structured. They say, here are the 10 things that are relevant to say about a city or here are the 12 things that are relevant to say about a musician and that's what you fill. Um, so, You can use the microphone. There's a microphone question so that everybody can hear you. Uh, I request you to use uh, uh, marker to write down as being back to since you have been in it. To write down what? So suppose you are telling that the uh, info box, how it will be info box. If you are writing something like that, whenever it is needed, you can use your uh, marker if it's possible. Uh, I'm not sure what you're asking. I haven't I haven't mentioned anything about Wikidata. Yet. Suppose I hope that there will be people who I don't know. That what is info box? Oh, okay. What an info box? Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Do we have a marker here? No, no. It's, it, 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 it's a chance. It's a chance. The marker, please. Somebody throw a marker, please. So it will be input. Okay. Very nicely you are building. A marker? Okay. So in a few minutes. Please. All right. So, um, so in case someone doesn't know, an info box is that part of an article Here's a Wikipedia article. Don't be alarmed. It's right to left. It's Hebrew. Everything's okay. <laughs> so this is the article about Chandigarh in the Hebrew Wikipedia, my home wiki. And maybe that's a confusing example because it's right to left. What if we... What if we... article about Chandigarh on the Dutch Wikipedia. Okay, left to right, everything is okay. And the info box is here on the right. This table here, that's the info box. Okay, and as you can see, it has fields. It has, you know, uh, square area, population size, uh, uh, major, major city, etc. Dutch is not the best. Um, that's an info box, and it is achieved on wikis using templates. Okay. And most, most wikis, depending on your language, most wikis will have some kind of help page to know that. Uh, just go to the wiki and look it up. But I will not talk much about how to create an info box on Wikipedia here. I will focus on Wikidata. So, getting back to my talk. So, um, actually, you know what? Let's let's use this chance to to give an example. This is the article on Chandigarh in English. 
which is a centralized media repository that serves all of us, right? We all pull data, uh, media from commons. Likewise, Wikidata is and will become even more a centralized data repository. And just like we pull an image from commons and embed it in an article, we can pull data from Wikidata and stick it in our info box or in our article that gets updated, all Wikipedias using that data will be updated, even if they never, you know, learned about this, the new Brazilian census. It'll automatically be updated in even the smallest wiki, if that wiki is pointing at Wikidata. That is huge. That is the great promise of centralizing the data. It means that the efforts of the Brazilian Wikipedians will benefit all of us just as the efforts of Indian Wikipedians will benefit everyone else writing articles about India. So it, redu it greatly reduces the duplication of efforts and the uh, uh, menial labor that we need to do to keep everything up to date. And we will see how that's done. And of course, we do all this on a wiki with all the obvious benefits of a wiki. I hope I don't need to convince you that wikis are awesome. But of course, the fact that it's a wiki means that all the different changes are saved. We can, we can have access to older data. Uh, we can revert vandalism. We can have talk pages about items. Right? We can do everything we can do in a wiki just by comments. Right? It has all the benefits of a wiki uh, for collaboration. And of course, it's very important that Wikidata is under a free license. Specifically, it is under a different license than Wikipedia. Wikipedia is CC by SA, right? Wikidata is CC0. CC0. If you've never heard of it, CC0 is essentially a legal tool that is aimed at uh, uh, mimicking the public domain, the status of no copyright, right? Public domain. The reason we need a separate thing is that some countries don't actually have a legal concept of public domain or their public domain has all kinds of weird restrictions. So it's just easier to have an actual license called CC0 that clearly says, no rights reserved, you are free to make any kind of use of this data, you don't need to attribute it, you don't need to share a lot, you can use it commercially, just like public domain, right? No restrictions whatsoever. The reason it's important that Wikidata data be available under CC0 and for example, not require attribution, is that we want this data to power a lot of applications, many of which would not be able to give attribution and therefore technically would not be allowed to use Wikidata data. We want that data to be good. So the license is the freest license possible, CC0. You can do absolutely everything you want with Wikidata. So Wikidata is wonderful. Okay. Structured data. Let's try and understand that concept in practice. Structured data. The Wikidata approach to structured data is expressed in this little equation. Wikidata is a collection of statements, and a statement is about an item, and what it says about the item is that a certain property of the item has a certain value. Okay? No, of course it's not okay. It's way too abstract. I know. But let's break it down. Item is any topic at all. Any topic you can think of on Wikipedia. So a person, a place, a concept, a, a musical work, anything that could be a Wikipedia article could be a Wikidata item. Anything that we can describe can be a Wikidata item. Even abstract concepts like redemption or resurrection can have a Wikidata item. Um, a property is maybe best likened to a field in a form. Like if you are filling out a government form and you're asked name, birthplace, date of birth, all of these are properties. And what you fill in, in those fields, those are the values, right? So, uh, 
the properties can be, for example, height for a mountain. One of the things that are interesting to say about a mountain is how high it is. One of the things that are interesting to say about a country is what its capital city is, or what its currency is, right? Or what its official languages are. And of course, a person can have any number of things to describe them. Gender, date of birth, place of birth, languages they speak, occupation, anything at all. And the value is simply what that field is for that item. Right? So the capital city of Germany is Berlin. The value would be Berlin. The property would be capital city. Is that clear? Who is really confused by this? Please raise your hand and I will, I will explain. More or less clear? So we have an item, like the country of Germany, and then we have properties for that item. Population size, area, official languages, and each of those properties has a value. Okay? So, it be a literal value, like a number or a quantity, or it can link to another Wikidata item. So, excuse me, could you take your phone call elsewhere, please? Thank you. Um, so, the value of the capital property of Germany is a link to the Wikidata item Berlin, but the height of what height is that? Does anyone know? 8,848 meters? Yes, correct. So obviously the height property of the item Mount Everest would be just that number, right? It's not, it's not a wiki data item, it's just a number, right? Or, or a date of birth, etc. <clears throat> so let's take a concrete example of this. We could look at a simple statement about the item Earth. Earth, the planet we're on. Earth has a property called highest point. All kinds of things could have a highest point, right? Um, but not all things, right? So, you know, physical things could have a highest point. But if I have, if my item is about a book, you know, does it have a highest point? No. It's just not applicable, right? You cannot talk about the highest point in the book. Um, so Earth has the highest point, and it happens to be Mount Everest, right? So this is the, that first line is a statement. The statement is, for the item Earth, for the property highest point, it's a kind of property, the value is the item Mount Everest. Now, because this is a link to another item, I could actually look into this Mount Everest thing and learn that for the item Mount Everest, the property elevation above sea level, that's unique to the property, the value of that property is 8,848 meters. Now, this first item, Earth, um, um, so, so Earth, the first item, could actually have you know, other statements about it. There's more than one thing I know about the Earth. So I also know that a different property called deepest point has the value Challenger Deep, part of the Mariana Trench in the Pacific Ocean. And Challenger Deep, which is an item, has the elevation above sea level of minus 10,000 meters, right? It's 10 kilometers under sea level. And this is the way we describe data I hope you can see the structure in this data and also the links in this data. This points at this and this points at this. Do you see that? Is that clear now? The relationship between an item, a property and a value? An item can be thought of as a container or a bag full of statements, property, value, property, value, like a form with fields, okay? Now, numeric IDs. Uh, this is the exact same, exact same set of statements, except I have added these weird IDs. And they're actually very important. So all items on Wikidata have an ID of the form Q and a number some number. 
Okay? Every item on Wikidata has one unique number following the Q. And what does the Q stand for? Query? Query? No. That's a trick question. You have no chance of knowing that. The Q, uh, the Q stands for Kamarnisto, which is the name. It's an Uzbek name. It's the name of the wife of the chief designer of uh, Wikidata, the principal architect of uh, Wikidata. Uh, Denny Vrandecic, maybe you've heard of him, he was on our board of trustees until recently. What the name? The name, the Q name is Kamarniso. I can write it down, of course. That's the most interesting part of this presentation. Kamarniso. Of course, she, she is an Uzbek Wikipedian and Sisop, and she's married to Denny who is a Croatian uh, Sorry for the interruption. May elaborate the name. Hammer means moon and Nisa is lady. Yes, moon lady. lady. That's right. It's a beautiful name. Uh, she, she actually told me that. Yes. So, uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful name. And anyway, she gave us the cue for all items on Wikidata. And properties are identified by the identifier P. And, and what? <laughs> uh, so P for property, right? And it also has an ID. And this other item, Mount Everest, has its own Q number, in this case, Q513. And of course, next time we want to talk about uh, Everest, we use the same ID, Q513. Now, why do we do that? Why can't we just say Mount Everest or Earth? Any thoughts? Does anyone know or think they know why we need these IDs? Why can't we just say Earth, highest point? Well, one at a time. Yes. In all languages around the world. Right? Again, some of those languages are so weird, they're written in reverse. And they have their own sounds that may not include the sound Ur of Earth. Um, Mount Everest may not be called Mount Everest by everyone. Right? Isn't called. Is it called Mount Everest by everyone? Right. I cannot repeat that. Um, et cetera, et cetera. So first of all, we don't, we humans don't our language depending on our country. <clears throat> we don't agree on a lot of things. So just deciding that Wikidata will speak English and call everything by its English name is, a, is an absurd decision that is inappropriate for our truly multilingual movement. So that's one reason. A lot, right? We face that same problem in Wikipedia, right? What do we do in Wikipedia? We have a parenthetical edition, right? John Smith, actor. John Smith, painter. And sometimes we need to go further than that, right? And say John Smith, 17th century painter from Italy. Not to be confused with the John Smith, 17th century painter from Britain, right? So that's the solution we have in Wikipedia, right? These, these parentheticals because we want the article name to still be humanly readable. But in Wikidata, we are building a database that is designed to be used by both humans and computers. And so the solution in Wikidata is different. The solution is that items and properties and everything is identified by a numerical ID. That we can agree on, it's just a number. And it doesn't matter what number it is. It doesn't matter that Everest is 513. It could have been 487. It doesn't matter. So everything gets its own number. And at the same time, everything also gets... So Wikidata knows all the different names of Mount Everest. And you can use Wikidata in your own language. You can use Wikidata for items in your own language. You can use it for properties in your own language. You don't need to say highest point. You can say whatever it sounds like in your language. That is a huge part of Wikidata. It is designed to be truly multilingual from the get-go, from the very beginning. So that is another main reason for having numeric IDs. And the next step, of course, is to do it once more without the squishy human speak. This is how Wikidata itself, the software, sees those same statements that we just saw. 
Okay? As far as Wikidata is concerned, there's no such thing as Earth. As far as Wikidata is concerned, the statement is Q2's property 610 is Q513. That's it. The, 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 the core of Wikidata is million, hundreds of millions of statements like these, sometimes called triples. Triples. Item, property, value. Item, property, value. Do you see? Do you see that this is in fact just a representation of what we've already covered? I just removed the text. But it's the same thing. This still means Earth's highest point is this item. And this item is Mount Everest. And its height is 8,000 meters. Right? So this is just, just so you know, this is what the computer sees. This is how Wikidata is actually stored as a series of triples. Okay. <clears throat> so like I said, an item is essentially just a collection of statements assigning values to properties. And a property is like a field in a form. So, uh, I already gave these examples actually. Right, an item about a country would have these properties, uh, capital city, anthem, borders, official languages, gross domestic product, demonyms. Um, there could be hundreds and hundreds of properties for a country. And likewise, an item about a person would have statements about their name, their date of birth, their religion, who's their mother, who's their father, who's their children, notable works, place of education, anything you can think of to describe a person uh, reasonably uh, could be part of Wikidata. Uh, for a person, right, we can describe a person's height. Uh, usually, we don't bother to, right, usually. I mean, if we have articles on Wikipedia about politicians, for example, we generally don't include their height in the info box, right? It's not, it's not considered a relevant metric, a relevant piece of data about a politician. But if we're describing basketball players, then it, we always mention their height, right? Any, any kind of information piece about a basketball player always mentions their height because it's a very, very relevant uh, property of a basketball player. Uh, if we describe a sumo wrestler, we would mention their weight, right? But again, it would be irrelevant and maybe impolite to mention people's weight in, in Wikipedia. So, of course, we, we, it's not like it's a government form with 5,000 fields and we have to fill them all out for all items. No, we decide, it's a wiki, we decide what properties are relevant and interesting to describe a book, a place, a river, whatever it is that we're describing on wiki. Questions so far, before we actually go into a live demonstration of wiki. Yes, please, can you take, can someone pass the mic? There are two microphones, no, one microphone. Why, why can't the property what? Why can't the property be item again? Um, a, a property is a very abstract uh, tool for describing items. Like the property date of birth. Right? Okay, if, that, that's a property. Date of birth. If it were, if it were an item, what what would you say about it? Like, uh, <laughs> Sorry, what? Take that particular slide, three, three, three. It will help you. The color of the yes, is three. Wait, this? This one? The one about the items? Yeah. This one? This yeah. back. Yeah. Consider statement. Yeah. Uh, paper, paper's color is three. Right. Pro pro Properties color, right? Yes. The color can be item again. What is the color? Or, uh, you know, like something else. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. That's a good example. So, we might want to describe what is the color of something, and for that we would use a property color. But color is also a notion, concept, that we can describe, right? Color is, for example, a visible phenomenon, and color has wavelengths, right? And, you know, we can say some things about color. Uh, so color can also separately be an item. 
you know, so it, it, they would actually be separate. There would be a property color and there would be an item color. Uh, How many link that we don't link, that they're separate. Because color the item is about the concept of color. Whereas color the field, the property, to describe both an item and a property, but they're not a single entity. Okay. Oh, other questions? Yes. Tea break outside. Okay. Let's just take questions and then go out to the tea break. Yes, it's better. Before the next section. So let's finish the questions first. Labels for each language that themselves are not defined as a property. Right. Is it possible to have that or is it going to come? No, that's by design. They're designed to be... A, so we haven't mentioned label. Yeah, so we'll, we'll talk about that uh, in just a bit. So, any other questions before tea break? No? Okay, let's take no more than 10 minutes for tea because we have a lot to cover and we haven't even looked at Wikidata yet. So, 10 minutes. Be able to see much better if you take your chair and bring it up here to the front. There's plenty of room. This is what Wikidata looks like. It's available at wikidata.org. Wikidata.org. And um, no language code. No language code. Not en.wikidata.org, not hi.wikidata.org. Just wikidata.org. It's one project for all languages. Right now, it is speaking English to me. But I can set, change my preferences, like most wikis, I can change the language and that would actually change the language, not just of the interface, not just of the menus, it would change the language of the data that I'm receiving from Wikidata. So it's more significant than other wikis. And we will see this in just a moment. I want to draw your attention to the structure of a Wikidata page. This is a page about an item, an item about Chandigarh. The item is Q43433. That happens to be the Q number for Chandigarh. Now, the first thing we see about Chandigarh is this, this uh, top box here. It's a box of labels. Labels are what Wikidata calls the names for a thing. We've already agreed Mount Everest can have many names. Chandigarh can have many names. Even if it's called Chandigarh in all languages, they still spell it differently in different scripts. So, you'll see. But you can look at your own computer maybe, or again, come to the front. This says Chandigarh in English because that is the language I chose for Wikidata right now. If I had the setting on Punjabi, I would have gotten Chandigarh in Punjabi. And then it says, capital of Punjab and Haryana states, Union Territory of India. What, what, is that, what is that little line? That's called the description. So every item on Wikidata has or can have any number of labels, and any number of descriptions in one for each language. Why do we need a description? Again, because the name of the item might be John Smith, or it might be something like, I don't know, happiness. Happiness is a concept, it's an emotion, but it's also the name of a film, an American film. And there's probably also a book called Happiness. So again, in Wikipedia, what we do about that is we add parentheses. In Wikidata, we don't. The item is called what it's supposed to be called, happiness, or John Smith. But the description line is the equivalent of the parentheses for Wikipedia. The description line is where we say, this is a 17th century Dutch painter, not an American film. So that's, that's now please understand, that's the only purpose of the description line. It's not meant to be an encyclopedic entry. It's not meant to tell you everything you need to know about this item. It's just a disambiguation help. So really, you just need a few words, you know. Everest, you know, mountain in the Himalayas, highest point on Earth, maybe. Like a super, super brief uh, summary. If you're, I don't know, if you're writing about uh, uh, J.R.R. Tolkien, you don't need to say, 
uh, I don't know, great fantasy author of Lord of the Rings, uh, born in South Africa, Catholic, you know. No. The description should just say British author. You know, or maybe British author of Lord of the Rings. That's it. So again, it's just in case we, uh, we find some other J.R.R. Tolkien, maybe a movie about him, might be called J.R.R. Tolkien, right? And we want to disambiguate. This is about the author, that is about the TV program. So that is the purpose of the description. And as you can see, both this label and this description came from here, from, from the English language label and description. And Wikidata is showing me a few other languages that I chose, I told it what to show. I picked English, German, French, and Hebrew. Languages I'm comfortable in. And as you can see, Chandigarh has a label in German and in French. It's just Chandigarh. But it doesn't have any description defined. Nobody has put in a French or German description, right, saying city in India. Um, you can see that Hebrew also has a label, going from right to left, also has a label for Chandigarh, but also doesn't have a description. It doesn't have a description because nobody put it in. And so we should fix that right now because it's a wiki. Now, I hope you can see this. Uh, I click edit. Do you see the edit button here? Yes. In the corner? Yes. I click edit. Go to the description field for Hebrew. I switch my keyboard from right to left. And that's it. Now, Wikidata knows and will display to anyone browsing it in Hebrew. It will be able to display the, the name Chandigarh, but also the brief description, city in India, Punjab state. Uh, okay. That's actually not accurate, right? It's not exactly part of states in the middle between the two. I will fix this. All right. We need to save that. We need to save that. Yeah, it's very quick. So it didn't look like saving. Uh, but yes, it, it was editable, and then there was a save button, or just hitting enter. That saves the label. It's designed to be very, very easy to add labels. Now, I could end this session right now, and you already have a lifetime of work just adding labels and descriptions to Wikidata in your languages. But I won't end it now because there's more interesting things to, to be found. So again, uh, this is displaying only these languages just because that's my setting, that's my default. But actually, Wikidata, of course, knows the name for Chandigarh in other languages. I can click the more languages here. And now you can see that Wikidata knows how to say Chandigarh in Arabic, in Belarus, Belarusian, in Bulgarian, in Bangla, in Vishnu, Priya, and other languages, right? So it has, it has that label. But for example, it doesn't have a description in Bangla, and I'm sure someone in the room could fix that, right? Where's the Bangla people here? Yes? So, some of you could just go to Wikidata, type Chandigarh in the search, get to this item, hit edit in the corner there, and just type city in India or whatever in Bangla into that box. Now, I want to show you a very quick uh, walk through this article. So in addition to a lot of labels and a lot of descriptions, see Canada does have a description. Respect to the Canada community. Canada has a description for Chandigarh. Can anyone read it? What does it say? When the fonts are not rendered properly. Yeah. Oh, yes. I can read bad, bad Linux font for Canada. Yes. Problems in Canada is Chandigarh. And description is Punjab, Matu, Haryana, Haryana, Rajagada, Rajarani. Right, so that sounds like an accurate description, unlike the one I made. Excellent. There's a label. Get, get on it, Punjabi Wikipedia. Alright, so, uh, but this was, again, this was just the labels and descriptions. This is just kind of the top 
of the Wikidata icon. Now, what does Wikidata know about Django? These are statements that have already been fed into Wikidata about Django, about the city. Let's see, what does it know? This is a, a kind of table. On the left are property names. On the right are values. Again, you would be able to see better if you move to the front. But the first thing we see, for example, is a property called Dewey Decimal Classification. Do you know the Dewey Decimal System in libraries? That's used to catalog books in libraries. It's like a number, a decimal system. So, yeah, the Dewey Decimal, the Dewey decimal System. So, Wikidata knows what code you need to use in a Dewey library to get books about Jumping Jar. Isn't that useful? Uh, it's not maybe the first piece of information you are looking for about Chandigarh, but the order here is pretty random. But anyway, you know, that's something that Wikidata knows about Chandigarh. It knows to associate it with a different ID in a different system, a system of librarians. Maybe you don't really need that for Chandigarh, but it could be very useful for other kinds of uh, things you might look up. Let's look at something else. Okay, it knows that it's in the continent Asia. Okay, right? So the property continent, value, Asia. It knows that the country is India. Again, pretty simple. The property country, the value is India. Of course, if we um, click India, India itself, of course, is an item, right? A Wikidata item. So I just click India, and we can switch to India. You can see that India, is Q668, okay, that's its Q number, and you can start looking at what does Wikidata know about India? Well, it knows that it's named after the Indus River, I mean, the, the, the English name at least. Um, it knows what its highest point is. Um, it knows what the country calling code for India is. But these are things you might not have you know, thought of uh, 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 mentioning about India, but all of these make sense in some context. You know, when when I want to write some kind of application, uh, some software, for example, I could pull up all those international calling codes from Wikidata. Uh, it knows the capital is New Delhi. It knows the currency is the rupee. It knows the head of state is Mr. Mukherjee. It knows it shares borders with. And now, what do we see now? We see one property with many values. This is necess necessary, of course, right? Because, for example, the property shares border with, of course, has more than one value for most countries, right? There's more than one country in border with. So the single property shares border with, by the way, we can say that is, is speaking English to us now, but of course, you know, secretly, these are all numbers. Uh, you can see it. Uh, in the little address bar there, but it's P47, shares border with is property number 47. So, India is P47 with um, Q837, which is Nepal. And it is also P47 with Q902, which is Bangladesh, etc., etc. So, you can see, I don't know if you can see where my uh, scroll bar is, it's right here at the top. So there's a whole lot of data in Wikidata about India. This is all statements about India. All of this. Okay, so it knows, it knows quite a lot. For example, it knows the population of India. This is worth demonstrating. It knows the population of India. This is the property population. As you can see, it has many values. And the values have a qualifier, we haven't mentioned that yet, they have a qualifier, because if you think about it, there, today there is one answer to what is the population of India. If I ask Wikidata what is the population of India, I expect it to return the latest census. I expect it to assume I'm talking about the present, but of course I'm quite likely to sometimes be interested in what was the population of India in 1970 or in 1870. Right? And that's data that's available. You know, some, some years at least it's available. 
Um, we can teach Wikidata that data, but of course we need to be careful to explain to Wikidata this is the value as of that year, and this is the value as of this year. So someone has gone and done that, and Wikidata has population figures for different years, different points in time for India. Again, that means programmatically, I can retrieve this data now and build all kinds of beautiful graphs comparing something to population size in India per year. Because Wikidata knows all that for every year. You see that? Under, under the statement, you can, you can sometimes see references. And this number, this specific number, comes from the World Bank database. So Wikidata also tells you, ideally, of course, just like Wikipedia, we don't always have citations, right? Sometimes we have stuff on Wikidata, in Wikipedia without citations. Just the same, some data on Wikidata has no reference. But ideally, this data has to show you the provenance, where it came from. And this particular datum came from the World Bank database. Okay, there's also an, an audio property that is pointing at an AUG file, an audio file of commons. So Wikidata can also teach me how to pronounce Champiga. Uh, and it knows what commons category for Champiga. So I can again retrieve the appropriate category on commons describing this thing, Champiga in this case. But if I'm looking up a Wikidata entity about a person, Again, it will point me to the correct cat the commons category for that person. So again, this is just the beginning of a list of many, many statements available about Chandigarh. Um, now let's proceed to a little demonstration of contributing to uh, Wikidata. Uh, I've already I've already shown you how to contribute a label or a description, right? Just click edit on that label box. But let's look at the article for this guy. We met him yesterday, Dr. Pater, right? The Punjabi uh, author that we met yesterday at the ceremony. Uh, what does Wikidata know about this guy? So you could go to Wikidata.org and type his name in the search box and find him. But if you already are looking at a Wikipedia page, you can always find a link to Wikidata in the sidebar. If you go to the side here, you see it says Wikidata item under tools. Wikidata item. So you can just click through to that. And now you see, uh, this is a little too large, but you see the, the Wikidata item about Surjit Pata. Okay? And you can see, for example, that again, he has no label and no description in Hebrew because no Hebrew speaker knew about this guy and put in a label. I can fix that right now. But what I want to show you is the statements about him. So what does Wikidata know about him? Now remember, Wikidata doesn't automatically know everything Wikipedia knows about him. Someone needs to feed that structured data into Wikidata. So let's see. Well. The first thing it knows about him is very important. It's a very important property. It's called instance of. Instance of. If there are any programmers in the audience, instance of is kind of like a class of an object. Like what kind of thing is it? It's a very important property in Wikidata. So are we talking about a country, a currency, a book, a river, a mountain, a musical work? Different things. In this case, this item, Surjit Bata, is instance of human. So first of all, it's not a river, it's not a mountain, it's not a country, it's a human. Okay. Now, it also knows uh, the place of birth. It knows that he's a writer, and a poet, and a linguist, and a translator. But I know something Wikidata doesn't know. I know he teaches at university, right? So I can teach Wikidata at that point right now. Now, see, uh, under the property occupation, 
there's an add link at the bottom. Do you see this? Add value. I can just click the add button here. And I have a, an edit field. And I can just type professor. Oops, not in Hebrew. I can type professor. Uh, see, and uh, it gives me the option to pick the occupation teacher professor. I click that, and I click the save button. Saving, and done. As of right now, Wikidata knows that Dr. Butler is a teacher. Until this second, it did not know that. What does that mean? It means that if I were to query Wikidata, and we're getting to that, how do we query Wikidata? How do we get data out of Wikidata? But if I were to query Wikidata five minutes ago and ask for, give me all teachers in India. Not, not actually all teachers, of course, all notable, but all, all people who were covered who are teachers and are from India. I would have gotten a lot of results, and Dr. Potter would not have been among them would not have been among them, because Wikidata didn't know that he was a teacher. If I run that query now, I will get Dr. Patton, because I added that little bit of information, occupation, teacher. Do you see what I'm saying? So that's how I'm giving the talk, so I will not do that right now, but I could, do you see, click add reference here. I could click add reference and add some kind of link or citation to where I learned this information. I'm not doing it now in the interest of time, but also because I don't have a good reference. I just heard, uh, in, in, in the words used to introduce him, I heard that he's a teacher here in, in this uh, university system, and I tend to believe the president that he probably is a teacher, but of course we would need a good reference for that. I just don't have it right now. Okay. So what else does Wikidata know about Dr. Potter? It knows that his gender is male, his date of birth is 1944. By the way, that's just a year. Maybe we could find out the exact date of birth and change that on Wikidata and give him an exact date of birth. It knows about an image of his, it knows that he's a citizen of India, and it knows that he received two awards, for example. So that's also a property that can be modeled on Wikidata. Award received, name of the award. Why, why would we record that on Wikidata? Because then, again, we can query based on that. We can start asking questions like, I don't know, uh, how many Nobel Prize winners uh, are from India? We could compare that to how many Nobel Prize winners have parents from India, or of Indian descent, right? We could ask, we could ask all kinds of interesting questions uh, if we model things like awards. What else? That's it. Um, that's, that's all that Wikidata knows about Dr. Potter. What does it not know? All kinds of things, of course. Uh, it doesn't know his height, but we agree that's not really relevant for, for an author. But here's an example of a whole property that just isn't here. Uh, do you remember Dr. Potter is a major Punjabi author? But that is not mentioned anywhere here. His language, which is super relevant for an author or a poet, is not mentioned here. I could fix that. Uh, I could go here to the bottom of the property list, and click Add, and then I can pick what property I want to add. I can say language. I can just begin typing it, and I get autocomplete. And you see that there's a property called languages spoken, written, or signed. And I can pick that. And then for the value, I can say Punjabi, not Punjabi the state, Punjabi the language. Okay, I pick the right, the right item, and I hit save. And now I didn't just add a value to an existing property, I added a new property. Until now, Wikidata didn't know what language this person spoke or wrote in, speaks. Uh, now it does. Of course, Dr. Potter also speaks English. We could add English. Maybe that's important because Punjabi is the language he's creating in. But we could certainly add English. He's obviously also an English speaker. 
Is that clear? Are you following me? I added the property, I added the value. Yes? Okay. Is anyone really confused and would like me to repeat something? Yes? Are you, are you confused, sir? No, you're just scratching your head. Okay. Um, so, but I also wanted to show you how, you know, major things like India, you know, has hundreds and hundreds of statements with all kinds of things, but less mainstream topics like Dr. Potter, who is very well known uh, in Punjab, but is still not a hugely uh, world-renowned figure, uh, has fewer statements just because, for obvious reasons, fewer Wikidata contributors have, have worked on, on that. But I hope some of you uh, who speak Punjabi could improve this entity uh, later. Now, one, one final thing I will go over in just reviewing what a Wikidata page looks like is this final set of values. These are called identifiers. And Wikidata is an excellent nexus, an excellent meeting point to connect different systems. So every library system, every catalog system, every national archive or database has its own set of IDs. And it is very useful to be able to know that ID 317 at the National Library of India is referring to the same person or place or notion as ID 586 in the German National Library. And Wikidata achieves that. Wikidata can tell you what these IDs are. So he can tell you, for example, the VIAF ID. Maybe you have heard of VIAF. It's the Virtual International Authority File. It's something librarians use. And it's kind of a super catalog of names of authors by national libraries. So the National Library of many, many countries, including India, are, are participating in this database. And so there's one universal VF ID for every author in the world to the extent that those libraries have covered them. Right? So if you want, for example, to look for material by Dr. Potter, or I don't know, by, by Tagore, in the French National Library, maybe there's something interesting there, you know what ID you need to look up because you know the French National Library ID because it's listed here in Wikidata. Um, you even know its Facebook page. Yes, Wikidata can send you, in this case, this is a living person, he has a Facebook account. Wikidata, someone has put that into Wikidata so we can actually find him on Facebook. That's pretty awesome. Uh, he also uh, wrote uh, wrote a script for a movie, a Punjabi movie. And because of that, he has an ID in IMDB. You know that site, IMDB, the Internet Movie Database, which lists, you know, everyone who had anything to do with the movie. So he wrote, he's a screenwriter, at least for that one movie, and so he has an IMDB ID. He has some kind of code in that system, and Wikidata can send you there. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of IDs here. And of course, finally, Wikidata knows has what's called site links. It knows what wiki has articles about Dr. Bhatta. Right. So Bangla has an article, Hindi, Malayalam, Punjabi, uh, Eastern Punjabi, Telugu, and Urdu. Uh, the rest of you can start working on it. Um, it also might have links to a wiki source, for example, but there is nothing obvious in wiki source. Uh, obviously, his works are still copyrighted, so unless. But these are side links, and for some for some uh, items, you could have wiki source links as well. All right, so that has been a little tour of what a Wikidata item page looks like. An item has labels and descriptions, then it has a bunch of statements, you can add to them, you can edit them, you can add references to them, and finally it has identifiers. And of course, many of the values, remember, are items. You click through to them and get to their entity page, and look at their statements and their properties. Okay. Um, English. Actually,
actually knows that Dr. Parker was born January 14, 1945, a specific day. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't actually give us a reference. It doesn't give us a reference, but we could. We could go here to the date of birth, which also doesn't have a reference, and replace the uh, maybe incorrect 1944 with the at least apparently more correct because more accurate. Uh, uh, what was it? January, January 14th. So we can edit and say, and say, but it is at least as accurate as the English Wikipedia. So you could go and do that. You could go and extract information, ideally with references, from Wikipedia into Wikipedia. Uh, for example. I saw that the English Wikipedia article mentions the universities that Dr. Hopper was educated in. You could add that to Wikipedia. To Wikidata. There's a property called educated in or place of education. And you could add that. There's, again, there's no end to what you could add uh, to this item or to any other item that you care about. Okay. So, query Wikidata. How can we get all those weird queries that you mentioned? Like all painters who have a cat. Or, sorry? Can't hear you. What are you saying? Uh, there's something called Resonator. Resonator, yes. There is something called Resonator. Um, let's, let's take a quick look since you mentioned it. Resonator. 